Hi everyone, my name's Catherine. Welcome back to my channel. I make videos about dyeing, sewing, and upcycling. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this incline ice dye t-shirt. First I want to talk about the supplies that I used. The first thing is a 100% cotton t-shirt. This t-shirt has been pre-washed and it's 100% cotton. For the dye today, I'm going to be using this Pro Chem sampler dye set. It has six colors. It comes with Synthrapol, which is also known as dyer's detergent, and a packet of soda ash. So it's a great value. I've already done one project with this one and there's plenty more to do this shirt and more projects. So this is a powdered dye and I'm also going to be using some string to be tying up my t-shirt. Other things I'm going to be using are rubber gloves, a dusk mask for working with powdered dye. I like to use these little plastic knives to scoop the dye. I have this plastic gutter down spout that I'm going to be using for my incline. I have five pounds of ice. I have a bucket for my soda ash solution. And then I also have this Rubbermaid tote that I like to use for ice dyeing. It will catch all the dye runoff and just keep it totally contained. So those are all the things I'm going to be using in today's video and I'll put the links down in the description below so you can see where I got them if you're interested in checking that out. Another thing I forgot to mention is that I have a piece of plastic as a drop cloth. So I am going to start by folding my shirt in half and then I'm going to start folding a triangular piece. So the center of my wheel or this radial design is going to be right kind of by the underarm seam of this t-shirt and I'm going to accordion fold this triangular piece all the way until the whole thing is completely folded. It's a little tricky when you get to the collar and the, sh um, the sleeve, but I'm just going to keep folding the whole thing. See, I'm just folding the sleeve at this point until it is all into that triangular shape and then I'm going to turn it over and just tuck in little pieces that are sticking out and do the same thing on the other side. The other side's a little easier because that part of the t-shirt is a little bit more square but it's going to look kind of like a paper airplane triangular fold. So I just take my time and go slow to get it as even as I can get it. So once it's all folded, I'm going to get my string and I'm going to carefully tuck the string underneath and I'm going to start by tying the thickest part of the fold, which is the tip of the triangle. And I'm just going to go around the whole thing with string to kind of keep it under control. And I'm going to tighten it up. And then once I get to the end, I'm going to pivot and come back the other way. And it's a little easier once you get that first set of um, wraps around it. So I'm not going to wrap it super tight because I want it to have some um, ease in it so that uh, the die can run inside and down the whole thing. But I'm just going to kind of like pull it to make sure it's evenly tight and here's a close up of it. You can see how it looks. But you can see the folds towards the end are very obvious. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is put on my gloves and stir up my soda ash solution. I did about a gallon of water and I used the packet in the kit. So I let it soak for 20 minutes and then I'm going to wring it out thoroughly. I want it to be damp, but I don't want it to be too wet. The soda ash is going to help prep the fibers to receive the dye. Then I'm going to place it in my gutter down spout here. I'm going to put on my mask before I start to work with the powdered dyes. So I'm going to just make sure that all of the folds are facing up because I want to put the dye on the front of the shirt. Um, and now I'm going to start to add the dye. I'm going to start out with a little bit of blue here. And you can see I just like to put a little bit of dye on. Uh, a little bit goes a long way with this stuff. It's very powerful, especially when you're doing ice dyeing. And I'm going to add some purple here. It's like the reddish purple. I'm putting dye um, every couple of inches and leaving a little bit of negative space. So next I'm putting the red on with the purple. I just think it's fun to kind of mix colors, especially with ice dyeing, because you get the splits of colors and um, it just gives it a little bit more dynamic look. And this is the leaf green on top of the blue here. Next, I'm going to come in with the black and I'm going to just put it a few inches away from the last part of dye that I did, like I was saying. And as you can see, I made these color swatches to see exactly what these colors look like when I ice dye them. And I made a, a video about that and I will link it above and in the description below. I actually have a whole playlist of ice dyeing, so if you are looking for inspiration, check that out. And then at the bottom of the shirt now, I'm putting a little bit more blue. I decided to stay all in the cool color wheel section for this shirt just because all the colors are going to be running into each other. And I'm putting a little bit more leaf green on that blue. I did um, a green and a blue swatch with these dyes and it turned out really, really nice. So now I'm going to add ice and I'm just being careful not to knock all of the dye off of the shirt. I'm just going to fill up this little gutter downspout with ice as much as I can without having it um, fall out when I tilt it. So I'm just being kind of careful. You can always add more ice once you tilt it too. But I also want to have a little bit at the top so that there's that runoff of um, melted water that is going to run down the shirt and mix with the dyes and give you that really nice incline look. So I cleared my dyes out of the way and now I'm going to get my Rubbermaid and put the downspout with the shirt and the ice very carefully into my Rubbermaid. I just want to make sure that I don't disturb it too much. Got a little bit of an avalanche, but it's okay. I just picked up the uh, pieces of ice and put them back in like carefully. <laughs> you can see I'm just kind of like fitting them into the little holes that are in the ice sculpture or whatever. So here's the setup and the next step is to just let it melt overnight basically. Here it is a few hours later. You can see the dye is really starting to get into that t-shirt and there's some runoff coming out of uh, the downspout. I'm getting some really nice teals and purples. So this is always hard to wait, but it's just important to kind of let it sit and um, wait until it's completely melted. 
So now that the ice has completely melted, I took the downspout out of the Rubbermaid and I'm going to open it up. It's really soggy, so I'm using um, gloves, of course, and a drop cloth just to keep my work area tidy. So now I'm gonna cut it apart and you can see how the top of it has more dye than the bottom part. So that's gonna give me a really cool variation of color. And I'm just gonna cut it apart very carefully because I do not wanna cut my t-shirt. So I finally get it totally unwrapped and it's time to reveal how this one turned out. It's always a little bit of a surprise with every dye project. And there it is, it got a really nice pattern and I love how I have that negative space in there. It's really well done. I think this one turned out really nice. So I'm just kind of admiring the work and then next I'm going to rinse it in cold until the water runs clear and that can take a little bit of time. So I'm just going to keep rinsing, rinsing, rinsing. And then once it runs clear, I'm going to add the Synthrapol. Synthrapol is a very gentle dyer's detergent and it helps to keep the colors on the parts that you dyed and not go onto the white parts. So here it is after it's been rinsed and washed and I'm going to put it in the washing machine and dry it. I'm gonna wash it on hot with more Synthrapol and then dry it on hot to heat set it. Here it is after it's been washed and dried and I think it turned out really nice. If you guys like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out my other ice dyeing videos and you can follow me on social media at Onyx Art Studios. I also have multiple online workshops and you can go to my website onyxartstudios.com to check out more information. I'll see you guys next time and have fun dying. Thank you.